Hello, it's Sarah. My, all right, I had to straighten the camera. I am painting, guys. I want to say hi to Sharon and Sandra and those of you who have been enjoying my painting videos and wanted to come on and share. Sandra specifically asked me to do a cheeks demonstration, and I also wanted to come back and share the beard of this little guy. This is another... Um, Renee Mullins piece and I decided to do my ornament with that pattern so I shrunk the original um, tracing down about 60% we have a printer and I did it myself we just got a new one and I did it myself and it didn't quite come down far enough because I used these um, wood pile I'll show you these little I wanted to make tags out of these. These are um, 3.35 by 2.6. So, um, I'm sorry, 5.35 by 2.6. So this is the size. And I figured that's almost the size of a tag. Like, a, I don't really have a tag. Since I cleaned my room up, I'm not sure where to grab for things. But anyway, um, so I have two sizes. But I, you can take the original. So the original tracing, and which is big, it's this size. And then just decrease it, and it was 60%. So I did a few of them. So these are even tinier. Um, anywho, and I wound up with a couple of different sizes. Um, this one is the one that I'm going to be painting today, but these are actually a little bigger. So I made these ornaments. So see, it's a little bit bigger tag. And then I even did, because I cut these myself, this one's even a little smaller. Just a little. The design's the same size, but the tag just, the wood didn't reach that tall. And then I actually had grommets, I guess these are called, or eyelets, that I fit in there as my little... Um, to fill in the holes with. I'm not sure that I'll do it on all of them, but um, I have these. I think you, pr I probably got these online, but I think you can get them at Joann's. And I won't put, and actually we just drilled the holes tonight because I forgot to drill the holes. So we just drilled these and they were already painted, but I did my best to sand it and seal, uh, fix it before I, and then it's a little tight but I'm just going to wedge it in there and then I'll hammer it in with my um, mallet. And that's what I did on these. So um, I want to start because I take so long. My videos are long enough. I want to get started. So the first thing I wanted to share with you guys is the beard. And well, actually, I could do the cheeks too. The cheeks is a simple float with the... Um, true red I think it is let's see what it's called just to be country red and I'm gonna show you Sharon so I'm gonna come down because I think on your piece you just did it in the opposite direction you put the color so this has been sitting out a little while so you put the color like say this is Santa's cheek so here's Santa's face Here's his nose, here's his eyes. So you put the color like this. So the, the dark to light was this way. All right, oh, am I in the shot? Yeah, but what you wanna do is, you wanna just put the color closest to the edge and let it fan out this way. So see, the color goes up against this side and it bleeds out into his face. So I'm gonna show you on these, I'm gonna do them uh, the tops of their faces get burnt sienna. Let me see if I have that. And I'm using a 5 8 inch or a 3 8 inch angle brush. And I load my brush. Oops, there's another one under here. I have a lot of these. So, because I give these to my neighbors, a couple of neighbors, not all of them. And um, my family. I send them to people. 
Shirley Boster will be getting one. She sent me a package lately. Thank you, Shirley. Anywho, um, so we're going to shade up against his hat. And I put down all the bristles. And this is exactly how I'm going to do the cheeks. But then if it's too dark, because I am a heavy hand, I just like to tickle some of the color away. And you always have to remember that this is not the finished piece. Everything goes together. So don't be so hard on yourself for one flute. Kiwi hears me talking. Let's see. All right, those are all done. I have to put stuff over here so I, all right, that one's done. Okay, because I thought, I didn't realize that I had done my cheeks on these, so I had to prep more today. So I've been painting all day, and Kiwi hears me talking. All right, so we're going to go back to the cheeks. I'm going to load the brush the same way, corner load in the red, and I back, I leave the paint here, and I back off, because I don't need that much paint. But there's lots of water there, too. I like it. I think I'm going to go in with this. And all I do is I start in the corner. So right in the corner, all the bristles on the surface, I'm going to start at the top, actually, and pull it down up against the mustache. So that was, let me do it again. I'm going to do a whole bunch. I'm going right back to that runway, and I'm going to start in this corner this time and pull it right down the side of his face. And see how the glow just kind of comes from the side because we're gonna add the glow on the bottom of his nose too. So there's just a little glow in the corners and then under his nose. Some of them are brighter than others, but it's cold in the North Pole. <laughs> So I am just doing these like a, um, what do you call it, Project, a production line. I have little pieces of string on here because I was using a baby wipe. So this time I'm going to start here and leave it up against the mustache, you see? So it's coming from the outside edge as like a glow. You did yours like this. You put the color like that, which that's a way to go. You can go like that. That's a look that people do. But in this case, it's not the look that I want to do. I just want to do it coming from getting some water and I'm just going to pick up this color. And you don't really want it up at the forehead as much. You want it more down by the mustache, but I pity I pity pat it out. Do I have any more? One, two, uh, one, two, three. All right. I think. Oh, I have one more. This one's not done. Sorry. So I just want to keep showing you. And I'm corner loading in the red, walking away from the color. And see, less is more, I said that, but I'm a heavy hand. But you could always darken them up. Like if you think that's not enough, if it's not bright enough, I could come back and go again and brighten it up. Um, so I'm going to start here. And I walked it out further that time. And I put the color down in the corner. And I just, that, this one's really nice and dark. See how dark? This side's much darker. But that's going to be plenty. Now, I wanted to show you how to do the beard. And I have this one on already. I've already put a coat on, one coat for the candle and the mitten. 
then we'll come back and do it. And I'm using, for these, these are small, so I'm gonna use a number, a quarter inch comb. No, this is a filbert rake, I'm sorry. Hey Joe, you can bring her to me. I'm filming. I'm gonna get some white. And the idea is you want this to be like ink. So the paint flows off the bristles like ink. And then we're just gonna paint on his beard. So I have water in my brush and I make a little wetter, oh, I'm not in the shop. I'm just blotting because I had a lot of water. And then I'm just gonna take and make beardy marks and I, it's okay if I go right over the candle for now because I'm gonna clean that up and that's basically it you guys like you don't want to cover all the gray you undercoat with gray and you don't want to cover it but you do I mean that's it see how it looks beardy I've already shaded this one but basically, I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to load the brush on these smaller ones. Now, see, I'll do it on the big guy. This is a big guy. This is the original size. And I'm, I'm, use, I'm just going to do the same thing. Take your time. Less is more, and you can build this up as you go. And you kind of want to make sure that you pick up and land your stroke so you don't leave big blops like that. So you just want to have the tips of the bristles hitting the surface. We're also going to use a liner brush eventually. See now I'm starting to let too much of the other bristles hit it. I want to keep it really up on the tip. And don't get, uh, I could be using a much bigger brush for this because it's bigger, but don't get caught up in like every little stroke of the brush. Just let it be what it is. It's going to look beardy. And then we're going to use a liner to add even more like deliberate. Um little strays and stuff like that. But doesn't that look beardy already? That's a very good word, it's beardy. But you really wanna stay up on the tips of the rake or the comb. And then, and leave gray showing. Get as close as you can to the mitten and the candle. You can turn the brush on its side a little if you're coming down the edge. Oh my gosh. I guess I'll go get her. I'm sorry. I'll go get her because it's just annoying. And when I come back, we'll do the, li the liner brush. I'll be right back. Okay, Kiwi is with me, little brat. She heard me talking and she just wants to be in on it. That's my bird. Just loading the brush again. I know, you want it to be in here. I just figure I might as well do them. So I want to be up on the tips and go in the direction of the beard. That's what the directions say. Like, oops, see I kind of went off. But you can fix it. It's a beard, it's not, um, let's see. When you load the comb or rake, you can kind of feather it out like this, push it down and get those bristles to separate. And then when you come in with it, you'll get a much more defined hair look. Turn it, because there might be paint on the other side. And so you just kind of splay it out like that, open the bristles. And if you go over the candle and the mitten a little bit, that's okay. But try and get up as close as you can. 
and right up to it. I have one more to do, but I'll do it off camera. And then I'm going to take a liner and I'm going to load it the same way, making sure it's nice and thin, the paint, because I want it to come off like ink. And maybe add a few flyaway, flyaways and a little bit darker paint. So I'm still coming in and landing, but I'm going to make them, a few of them go out to the side, like And if I missed a few, like this over here looks a little bit grayer than I'd like. And the paint is kind of not making a line as much as it's kind of skipping. But that's okay because we're going to shade. It still looks beardy, right? And when you're whipping these out, making, you know, more than one, I, I tend to get more careless, you know, like I'm not being as particular. <clears throat> but like, this is what I mean. So I have these little flyaways because when everything is on it, when you have the snowflakes, the, you know, everything is there, you're not looking at every little hair that you just painted. So in the, pro in the moment, don't be so, don't think about it that way as like each little hair. Let it be fun. Just move your hand and enjoy the process as best you can. Um, that's the thing that I'm, that's my, my takeaway this year. Um, this 2019 has been, my brother passed away. Um, I started going to Al-Anon. And I am learning a lot about myself and staying in a place of serenity. No matter what's going on around me, I can pull myself out of it and, and think of something good and stay in a place of calm and serenity and love and light. And painting is one of the things that always gave me that serenity. And that's why I think I wanted to get back to it so much. And because at first I thought I was using it as an escape from <clears throat> reality. <clears throat> and I was a little bit nervous that I wasted all this time that I should have been facing up to things, you know. And here I come to find out that, oh, excuse me, painting is an excellent way to escape and calm yourself and have serenity. It's something that I have in my toolbox of, of good things that help me. So don't be so hard on yourself if you've been crafting. Now, if we overspend, that's another, another thing, right? I mean, you have to do all things in moderation. If I'm doing it and it's taking away from my time with my family or my responsibilities, that's different. But I haven't heard anybody, and I don't know if I like that, but, um, and it has given me so much pleasure. All right, so now I want to come back to this guy who I already did the shading, and we're going to do the mustache. I just um, wanted to brighten up a few spots. But I already shaded this. I'll show you what that looks like. So when you shade, she wants us to go, I'm going to use my 5 8 inch, 3 8 inch angle with, um, I think it's called, it's a gray. 
Anywho, it's a dark gray color. It's been out for a bit, so I'm breaking off that um, the covering. Um, and I'm going to go under the mustache. Oh, you know what? I got to mix it with zinc. I bought some zinc, too. In my previous video, I used, um, I think I used, like, charcoal or graphite. Zinc is very similar to that. And then we're going to go around the mitten. And I'll touch up the mitten, get, you know, make it sharper. But there would be a shadow because the hand is on top of, and then she put a little bit here. Maybe a little on top of the... And then I'm going to add... So that's how you shade. Then we're going to take our rake brush again, load it with the white again, and just stroke in a mustache. And he has a little round nose. We're going to paint that in. So I'm just going to gently stroke in a mustache see how I'm turning the brush on its side a little bit and we'll use a liner to really get the, the shape better but this is just to add see how I turn the piece too I think it should it would actually be growing just straight, but that's kind of looking mustachey, isn't it? And then we can really fill in with the liner. Get that shape tweaked to how we like it, and we're going to put a nose there. Oops, that's too thick. Always have your um Q-tip handy. I just pushed down way too hard and and the brush flattened out. You want to stay on the tip of your brush. Just use the tip, see? Much better. Follow the line of the shape of the face and the nose. Oops, that's a little thick too, but that's okay. Hmm. And I think I forgot on my other pieces that the little hairs on the side of his head, these little guys. And we're going to do more that come up around his, um, his, the cuff of his hat, see? They're, they're going to come up, but first we have to do that. But see how he has a mustache? Look how mustachey it looks. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. All right, so this I can go in. I'm going to take it with the comb first. You could probably just do the whole thing with the um, liner. But it's it's just the comb has, you know, a bunch of more bristles so you can get it in there. And maybe you'll get really good at it with the comb. And But I'm going to take it and just pull it over. This is actually called a rake, isn't it? It's a filbert rake. Does that look beardy? I mean mustachey? Can't really do these until I shade them. So let's 
finish that and I'm going to show you one more thing. I'm going to show you how I got really got this um, the fur to look really good. I really got better at that, the stippling. So what was I going to do? Oh, I was going to shade this. So again, we're just going to take that zinc and gray mixture. So the dark gray plus a little bit of zinc, which is kind of like a charcoal -y color. And just separate right here. Give them a little And that's it. Maybe a little right here too. Because the mustache would be on top of his hair. Alright. And then if you have a, these are called the Debbie Mitchell Stipplers. Um, I think I need my smallest size though. I have several sizes. I think I'll use this one because I like the shape of it. It's kind of more oval instead of round. And I'm going to go to the directions, and I should have really just shown you how to do it on this one, but I'm going to do it, keep it on my little ones. It is yellow ochre and honey brown, and then just yellow ochre. So I'm going to take a little yellow ochre and honey brown. And I'm going to make several different lightnesses. So this one's going to be, and then I'll use titanium white. So this brush is a little big, but I think I'll be all right. I'm, or I have this one. Yay. Okay. So first, this is just honey brown by itself. Oops. Um, so I'm going to go in honey brown with a little yellow ochre then just yellow ochre, then yellow ochre and white. So first it's honey brown and I'm going to pounce it off and mix it with the yellow ochre. And I just mix it on my palette and make a little bit of a lighter color than the first color. Each color I use I want to be a little lighter than the first. And then just using the tips I'm going to stipple and it makes it look like fur. The first time I did it I didn't vary the colors enough like I don't think there was a big enough difference in the colors so it didn't show. But look how furry that looks. Doesn't that look cool? I don't know if you can tell on camera but I'm putting it on his cuffs. I love it so much. OMG. Um, I'm going to do that here. I'm going to add a little more honey brown because I don't want it to change color too much at first. Like it, it should be a subtle, so I want it to be close to honey brown first. Yeah, Kiwi. What are you doing? So the other one has this one. Look, that one's a little lighter already, but I'm going to build up this one. I think I am, but I end up going and getting too much yellow ochre. And you need the bristles to be separated, not too mushy. This brush has um, a lot of paint in the ferrule. I think I'm going to order a small brush again. So now I'm just going into the yellow ochre only. And I'm going to pounce. And it's mixing with whatever's left on the brush. 
and then I'm going to come back and just, I'm going to move into the center a little bit more. Like, so that it'll start to look a little bit more rounded. That's the idea, but I am going to shade with Burnt Sienna anyway. I'm going to do just like more closer to the top of the cuff. So I'm not going to do it as all the way down. So it stays more like a highlight. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white to my brush. Right on the dirty brush and just blend that in. So I get one more brightness level. And I'm going to just put that like right in the center center. as a real highlight. You see how it like really, it kind of makes it start to look rounder. And doing several of them helps me too to, to like see what I want to do. Like the first one I just wing it and then I start to get the hang of it more and more and more, you know. So having all of these to do, it's so fun. Um, so I'm just going back and adding a little yellow ochre to this. And I want it to be very, like I just want to tap so that it looks fluffy. If I if it's too wet, it'll just blend together too much. But look at the difference. See how that looks bright in the middle? So now I'm going to take some of that paint out of there and just go into yellow ochre by itself. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edges, so I'll just start here. Like just do the middle section. This brush has too much paint in the ferrule and I can't. It's showing up. And then I'm just going to add titanium white and let that mix together with what's the yellow ochre that's left on the brush. And but I'm just going to pop that into the center to give it like a highlight. See how it just brightened it up? So that was my latest little discovery that I figured out. But you're, we're still not done. I just want to pop this up a tiny bit. I just like the brightness. These are a little bit bigger too, so that those this is a little tiny bit bigger. All right, and then we're going to take burnt sienna and shade with a um, angle brush. And then when you come back, or when you put the little hairs around his hat, you'll see. So I can just shade the bottom up against his little body along the side like this. I lost some color. It just wouldn't move. I didn't have enough water in the brush. But do you see all it gives it a really more a lot more depth, right? Let me make sure I have enough water and I'll do one more. Let's just do this first. That 
that's just creating that real shadow of like the hat is turning under onto his head. We'll do the cuffs the same way. And then up against his body. Cool, right, you guys? And then this one, I didn't shade his nose yet. I don't think I finished it with the line work. I didn't even shade this yet either, did I? I might have. Um, this one, take my liner and the white. I don't really have any white out. And just put a few little hairs kind of coming up over his, like coming out from under the hat. Little flyaways. Like that. And we'll put his little face on and stuff, but that's how you make it look like. All right. So that's really what I wanted to show you guys tonight. The beard, the mustache, and the hair, and then the fluffiness of, um, and I'll use, I'll show you on my, um, I have this big brush, and I'm going to do titanium white. And I just want to show you one more thing. These, the pom-pom. So I'm just going to load that in a decent amount of white paint but you still really just want the tips. So I don't need the paint to go all down in here. I'm only going to use the tips. So then I don't even have a circle there, but I'm just going to build a circle. Circles will grow on you, so don't get crazy. And then I'm going to do the same technique down the bottom to get my little snow base. I'm gonna let that dry for one sec and I'll put a little fuzzy, this might be too big for his, I think it might be. But I'm gonna use it again, but I'm gonna go to a little bit of a smaller brush. I don't wanna make his pom-pom too big. Isn't that the coolest technique though? This brush does it all for you, it's so cool. I love it. It's such a such a pleasure. We're going to shade it too and I'll show you how that looks. When you have the right tools, it's just a pleasure. They, can, they grow on you so easily, so just be careful. Make the hill a little more bigger if you want, you know. Hopefully I was in the shot. I don't know because I get so caught up in the... Oh man, it's so fun. Again, this is the Debbie Mitchell Stippler, and I think I have it in every size. Um, the big one here is a half inch. And I'm gonna hurry up and do this because I want I don't want to leave the paint on that for too long, but I'm gonna do a second coat. Let me put that in water. And we're going to go back to my big guy. Because this has had time to dry. So see how it looks a little bit flat? I don't know. I can't explain it. But then if I do a second coat and I don't go all the way to the edge, so I'm just going to stay toward the middle, it gives it a little more depth. And like for the bottom, I'm going to just hit it at the bottom and hit 
just don't like do it everywhere. It gives it a little bit more like, I don't know, I just love it so much. Um, and then we're going to shade it. I'm going to put that in water too. <laughs> I don't think I was finished with this guy's beard. I'm just going to give it another coat. It's late. I was um, painting all day, really. And I just, I wanted to try and get everything ready so that it, I didn't take up a lot of time with um, repeating so many. I, I repeat myself so much, but uh, Sharon and, who was it? Sandra. You guys are painting, and Sharon had asked the cheeks specifically so hopefully that was helpful and then the beard just be patient and stroke it in that looks really good I'm happy with that oh you know what I forgot his little hairdo I want to do because this one's so big it's a nice uh, sampler just stroke in a few hairs here in the direction of the hair, how it would grow. What's the matter, Kirby, huh? She's so funny, she wakes up from a dream and... All right, then I have to, sh I'm gonna use my liner to fill in and I have, this is a rigger, so it's a little bit of a thicker brush, but I wanna see if I can get up on the tip of it and just stroke what they, yeah, if you stay up on the tip, you can make nice thin lines. Kirby, Kirby, I know, stop it. She's crazy, okay, look, but look how that looks. I just love these little flyaways. They're, they're addictive. Especially down here, like at the tip of his beard, you could really make it hairy looking. I love it. All right, let's see. This looks a little too gray. Um... We're going to shade. I'm just going to do one more little bit and then you, I mean, I'm all done basically. I'm just repeating what I've already done. So um, now I can't find my brush up oh, there. So, you know, I'm pretty much done. I'm just repeating. So you guys can go have fun. But I'm going to take that zinc and a little bit of the gray, which is pretty dried up brush mix it, go under the mustache, um, for these ornaments they are much smaller and so like once you put the candle on and everything it looks really good. Um, oh yeah, I'll show you one more thing uh, with the snow. I just wanted to shade that and show you the difference that makes. I'm going to go around his arm. Around the cuff. And I can't really see where the candle shape is, but I'll wing it. And when I paint it again, I'll... All right. Anyway, this is what I wanted to show you on the, um, I think it's the Williamsburg Blue. 
she has us using to shade the pom-pom. I'll show you what that looks like because it's so cool. So basically, we're going to go from this to this. And I'm not going to do all the like ridges in the snow though. I'm just going to do the bottom. So I'm just going to do this. But you just take a side load and I could use a bigger brush but I think I'll be all right with this brush for my big guy. As long as I have enough water and I'm just going to swoop it around. So I'm putting the color, oh that's too much paint. So you know all I have to do is use my mop and I can pounce it and push it down. I might have taken off or um, I, I took away from the white so I think I'm going to add more white. And that just is because I loaded my brush with too much color. Like I had too much paint on the brush. Not enough, you know. Anyway, and then for the bottom, basically I'm just going to go along the bottom. And it just adds that, like, base. Right? But for this... I'll show you on this one. I have all the other ones too. These little guys. I don't need that much color. I don't think I did a second coat on these though. I, I like to do that second coat. I'm just going to put a few, I'm going to put more white back on here. That looks better. I like that better. I just want to do a second coat. Got a little out of control. So you can always adjust and fix things. Don't feel like, you know, it's not all about the, the one thing you did. I don't know how to talk anymore. Anyway, you guys, I hope that helped you, especially Sharon and um, Sandra. And have fun. I've enjoyed these little Renee projects with you guys so much. Happy Christmas. It is uh, Sunday night, so we're a couple days out still. Um, I don't know if I'll see you again before the holiday, but I just love these little ornaments. And these are going to be ornaments that I made out of tags. Thank you, Renee. They're so cute. Here he is. Thanks for watching.